Hello, hello. Hello, Rose. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. We are new to this whole podcasting thing, and we have no idea what we're doing. We're just doing it. Just like most things we do in life. Wing it. Wing it. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. <laughs> do whatever. And I'm doing whatever because I'm sick and tired of the old. And so I can forge a new path. What about you? Um, you have really good ideas. And you said, let's do it, Barb. And I said, okay. Oh, Barb. You just called yourself Barb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you cannot always get away with that. <laughs> I do prefer Barbara, but within self-talk, especially when I'm being critical on myself, oh. I will shorten it. <laughs> to get to the real sticking point faster. Exactly. <laughs> I do the same, but I cannot stand Rosie, and my self-talk does not include Rosie <laughs> ever. That is a little more flowery <laughs> than shortening it to Barb. Mm, that is a Barb, isn't it? You really like to Barb yourself sometimes, don't sometimes you? Sometimes like, I do. Oh, I do too. <laughs> Which is why I prefer Barbara. Barbara. Exactly. Barbie. Barbie is okay, if you know me. Okay. Or we're drinking. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast was because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and there is not any that I've heard podcasts of 40 year old and I'm 48, 40-ish year old women who are divorced, re-examining their lives, and don't feel elderly. <laughs> <laughs> I do not feel elderly. Sometimes when I walk a lot, I feel elderly. Sometimes I sound elderly. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so much more life to live, and there's so much out there that I haven't experienced and this ridiculous thing called a job hinders that. It does get in the way. <laughs> and I am not a, I do not want to be a slave to my job anymore. And by job, that's the property management job that I do, not the life coach job that I do. The problem with the life coach job that I do is I don't know how to get myself out there. The people who I work with are really great, but maybe they don't advertise for me. They shouldn't have to. And people have a problem asking for help. So I would much rather do it this way and help a broad segment of people and not have to get into people's pocketbooks to help them. Because I'm a helper. You are a helper. I am a helper. I love to help. So let's get to helping people. <laughs> let's help people. I think that is a great idea. So recently... The two of us went on this whirlwind road trip, <laughs> as we sometimes do, <laughs> and we had so much fun. And there were some days that were like, ah, and some days that were just, hmm, and then silliness, and then downtime, and that's just life in general. But what we found were all of these neat little out-of-the-way places that would not cause us COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Or huge strains on our pocketbook. Right. <laughs> right. And so one of the things that um, was really great was the Temple of Tolerance. And you thought um, some really great things about this and how these things can be overlooked in our own backyards. Like who would know that this place even existed? Right. We were looking for it and drove right past it. <laughs> With the GPS on and the address, we still drove right past it. But I'm so glad we found it. Yes. <laughs> so the Temple of Tolerance is this man who worked at, in prison systems, and he just took his backyard and built many different sort of, I guess for lack of a better word, altars or shrines. And all of these little things probably meant something to him. And they were designed for a specific reason. And it wasn't cataloged in all of the cases what that reason was. And it didn't matter to us. 
like we just kind of looked at it and thought, hey, wow, that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. There was one that w that was like all of the bullets from World War One and Two. That one was very profound. That was quite powerful. How those seventy three thousand inanimate objects were just so powerful in a physical representation of how many lives Ohio has sacrificed for the greater good, or in our theory, the greater good. Right. So that one was labeled, but all of the other ones were just little altars. Some, one of them had a picture of a man playing a guitar. And so that was definitely for a purpose. I don't know who that picture was. Um, but others were not labeled and we didn't judge it. Like, oh, that's for this group of people or this segment of people. It was just all in one ginormous backyard. <laughs> Very ginormous. <laughs> and it didn't matter to us what that segment represented. It was part of the whole, the whole experience, the whole life that this man was creating in his backyard. And I don't remember in our research when... He started it, but I believe the piece we viewed was at like 20 years old. So I think it's been there a while. But one of the pieces I found that I thought was quite powerful and very timely for today was a series of six gears, all different sizes, different shapes, <clears throat> hung on a wrought iron gate. And it was labeled the Wheels of Sindustry. And it says, powered by blind, excuse me, blind ambition and greed, and poses the question, are you a misused cog in this machine? If you just look at what's going on in the world, and I'm not going to delve into the negative things of politics right now, but just what's going on in the world today, are we being used by the industry of politics or war or greed um, so that one in particular just made me stop and think, you know, that could have been put up there just yesterday or it could have been there for 30 years. I don't know, but I think it's, you know, makes you think just about what's going on today and that we just deal with the same things over and over. Each and every day, so us spinning the others and the others spinning us exactly. continually, continually. So I wish that. I, I will put in the show notes the man's name and a link to this. I should have done my uh, proper duty and written it all down, but we're just winging it because it's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> we are winging it. But I invite you to explore your town. One thing that I noticed when we were out is we would ask wait staff hey, what's in this town? And they didn't know. And the same is true for us. We don't know. <laughs> or just any random individual <laughs> that I could get to stop and talk to us on our trip. <laughs> we don't know because we're so used to our neighborhood that we don't look beyond what's there. Very true. But yeah. we're going to change that as well. We're, we're going to take everyone along with us. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We don't always have a long weekend or a whole bunch of limitless time off work to, to do these trips like this. So I invite you, our listeners, if you know of a great out of the way, low key place, let us know. Let us know. Our email address is hello at brightsideofcrazy.com. Maybe we'll come and explore their town. Oh, that would be so fun. That would be fun. Help us do our research. Yes. <laughs> I would love to go be guided by somebody through their town. Somebody who's like really passionate about what's to offer there. Or even if they just know that secret little spot that's not on, you know, not at the Welcome Center and not on the, a brochure somewhere, but just some crazy backyard full of mounds of rocks that you can go <laughs> climb on. We're down. <laughs> Oh, so thank you to all that are listening and your input, because it's so important. What if all of these little out of the way places were mapped? And we used Atlas Obscura and there was one that you used as well. I believe Roadside America, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But 
how great would it be to have a guide in a town? That would be so awesome. Tell us history. The bright side of crazy guide to the United States. <laughs> and beyond. And beyond. Mars is next. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just Canada. People are in Canada, I hear. I gotta get my passport redone. I need a passport as well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that, don't you know? I do. Sometimes my Canadian accent is Minnesota, but <laughs> <It's all laughs> don't, the hate, same, right? don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> so on this podcast, um, I want to explore what crazy means. And crazy doesn't mean mentally deficient to me always. Sometimes I use it in that fashion, but sometimes I mean it as excited about, and that's what I mean about the traveling because I get crazy excited about it or what makes me crazy could be good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, stir crazy. I think everybody kind of feels right now. Absolutely. There's <laughs> a whole lot of stir crazy going on since March. <laughs> Increasingly since March. Yeah. And, um, what drives us crazy? That's kind of negative always. Maybe. Mm. I, uh, I get driven crazy for cookies. <laughs> That's in a good way. Until yes. I have to buy new pants. Everyone send Barbara cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone at once. Let's, let's stagger it out. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Cookie tour. <laughs> you get to eat cookies in obscure places in your town. So it is a two-part homework assignment for the listeners. I need to know the cookie, the best cookies in town. Um, and by cookies, you know, brownies, some snack cakes can be <laughs> interchanged in there. We don't want to discriminate against the other yummies um, and the local spots um, for somewhere to explore. Because, of course, you need a snack and energy. So I went to a cookie place. Did you eat the cookies from that place? Yeah. <laughs> I, I stretched it out over many family members and, and you shared? several days. I shared. <laughs> I kept the... So we went to a cookie place and we got a dozen and a half cookies. Six were allowed to be inside the car. Three for each Rose and myself. And the other assorted dozen were... No lie, in a box, taped closed in the trunk so that they would make them back, make it back to Ohio for sharing. But yes, I took them to my parents and we cut up some cookies and shared them all. And then what was left, I brought home to the, uh, to the kids. And I think I finished the last one yesterday, huddled in the kitchen by myself where my granddaughter couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite cookie from the place? Um... I think a peanut butter chocolate chip. Um, being fresh cookies, of course, they were super good the first two days, and then they started to get a little eh. Yeah. So um, they might have been better fresher, but again, I was trying not to be a glutton and <laughs> ate all the cookies by myself. <laughs> they were large cookies, and they were not cheap, too. So yeah. I was trying to prolong it. <laughs> They're all gone now. <laughs> Okay, so yes, Barbara will work for cookies. Yes. Um, and wherever there are cookies, good cookies, she will be. But even, even mediocre cookies, you know, <laughs> in the right combination with fun activities are still welcome. Sweet. Cookies <laughs> and weird experiences. We're about it. <laughs> We're so it. about it. <laughs> So in the tune of crazy, I want to talk about what we're crazy about. Adele had promoted this book, Untamed, by uh, Glennon Doyle, and I downloaded it from uh, Google Play because I'm all about the audio and my new car doesn't have a CD player, so the audio book thing that I could lend to friends um, is out because I can't hear it in my car. So I downloaded it. And so far I am crazy about this book. So untamed is she starts off talking about 
a zoo trip that she took with her family and it was a cheetah run and this woman the zookeeper trainer had a um, golden lab and uh, the golden lab and the cheetah were best friends the cheetah wasn't out at that time so the golden lab had to chase this large stuffed bunny that was tied to the back of a car and that had to help the cheetah remember what to do on the cheetah run because they were best friends and anything that the dog did the cheetah wanted to do and so the dog did it and then they let the cheetah out and the cheetah went to chase this and at the end the reward was a steak and this woman's daughter was terribly saddened by this and said, doesn't she know she's a cheetah? And it, that just broke my heart open. And what are we doing as we look out into the world and even thinking of your cogs and how we let go of what's innate in us? and let the world kind of wash over us, whatever it is. And for me, it's this job and money and my job is connected with my home and what I really want to do, the money isn't coming in for it the way that I thought that it needed to be done. And I need to uncog myself and untame myself and be wild. And so that's what I am crazy about. I'm not even done with the book yet, but I wanna tell you about this, it's untamed and I love it so far. I'll talk more about it as more nuggets come in. And I want you to read it, Barbara. I want you to download it. Okay. <laughs> I want everybody to, everybody. Okay, I have homework, so do you. <laughs> what are you crazy about? Um, well, right now I'm just crazy about, I'm crazy about my family. I got to, um, we celebrated my dad's 75th birthday over the weekend. Hey. So we had, I had my grandkids, my parents, both my kids, my daughter-in-law, all at my house. Um, just low key. Of course, it's never low key with cooking for that many people and um, <clears throat> making sure that there's not enough there's toys on the floor so that grandparents aren't going to kill themselves. Um, but so that was really fun. Um, like I said just getting four generations together all in one room. Uh, for the day and uh, my dad was having a good day on top of it so it was a so right now I'm crazy about my family that's awesome yeah Yay. <laughs> <laughs> my family makes me crazy <laughs> <laughs> well that's a whole nother, that's another episode that these same people that I'm crazy about are, make me crazy as well <laughs> as the cookie turns it's just a different day <laughs> So I have been single for a few years now, and especially during COVID made me really realize that it kind of stinks not to have somebody there all the time. Um, you know, I love cuddling the grandbabies, um, but sometimes that's not the kind of cuddles that grandma wants. So uh, we signed up for, we, I say we because Rose encouraged me to do so, or didn't stop me. That's a lot. That's half of it. So I signed up for a dating site and it is, they only give you so many people per day. So it's been real interesting. Um, they give you matches once a day and it's the first day I had nine, uh, other days it's been one. Um, you have to both like each other to be able to continue. And I have three that we have mutually liked one another. The first one um, was one that I was, well, I take that back. The first one that we connected with is younger than me. So you have to set a, an age range. And I did five years younger to 10 years older. My daughter even laughed when I told her because she said, mom, you're never gonna date anyone younger than you, you never have. Um, but I'm trying to be open. So anyhow, the first person that liked me was five years younger. I kind of ignored the the like and decided he was going to have to message me first, which he did, and we'll get to that in a minute. But then there was a gentleman that I think is totally 
my type. Um, I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. Um, but anyhow, so we started chatting and just nothing deep, just surface stuff. And then there were three, it came out that I was a grandma, which I am not, I do not hide. I love my grandbabies. And then there were several text messages from me with no response, which I was like, really? You know, you're older than me. You have to figure people our age will be grandparents. So I was kind of weirded out. Then I get a message from the dating site itself that says his account has been flagged. So uh, it is pending um, basically identi identity verification. So I'm like, okay. So then number two does, or the, the first one, the younger one, does go ahead and message me. So I text him back. His profile alludes to him being a comedian. Um, um, uh, anyhow, so I think he can handle my sense of humor. Maybe I'll try it. He's got a daughter. That means he can deal with granddaughters. Fine. So I messaged this one and then it kind of went flat too. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Then there was a third one that liked me and I'm pretty darn sure he's fake. But I, at this point, I'm like, what the hell? Let's talk to somebody. Let me learn how to play the game. I'm still not going to message him first, but anyhow, so that one I'm going into fully aware that he is probably a fake human being. So, um, okay. But the other one I did find on Facebook, he's local and real. So <laughs> um, you're a stalker. Um, I am, <clears throat> I've been known, I've referred to myself in the past as detective Barbara before I, uh, my previous life, I did go to school for law enforcement, but um, I like to know things. And he left en enough little nuggets in the profile that I was able to find him. Yes, he does live in Columbus. The profile's been there for several years. So, what other information did you find out from stalking him? <laughs> I was the daughter's really there. I know her name. I might drop that in the conversation if he ever <laughs> texts me back, just to freak him out a little bit. But, um, <clears throat> but I don't know. <clears throat> Um, so like I said, it, it went, it was just very <clears throat> on the surface stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, but, uh, so yeah, today's been quiet. Okay. So these matches come in at noon. Do you have yes. new ones now or did you already go through them? Uh, I only got one today. Okay. Um, I did look at it, but I did not make a decision so that you could okay. see. <laughs> Sorry, I had it pulled up and then. Um, so this is today's match. He is 42, so five years younger than me. Already not um, not the greatest thing. So he really loves his cat. Yes. He has three pictures. Two of them include the cat. <laughs> Pretty sure two of them. They might all be from the same day. And he likes black. So, um... I, I guess I just have to stop. Start with the very first line says, "I'm a picky eater." Okay. I, I just I don't know where to go with that. Why right. do you start with "I'm a picky eater"? <laughs> so that kind of I can deal with picky eaters, but I don't know why you'd start with that. So that means like we have to go someplace where you can definitely find a hamburger. I'm a picky eater too. I don't tell people that because I can find something everywhere. Yeah. So what is your ideal? dream match what do you see <clears throat> like if you saw the picture and the words underneath it and you're like that's my dude what what does it look like what does it sound like oh boy um he's gonna be in the late 40s early early to mid 50s i like some salt and pepper to white hair i really like white hair um, I like light eyes. That doesn't have to be a thing, but I tend to look at them more. <clears throat> I have light eyes. I don't know if it's, if it's a thing. Um, I just have to be able to read his words and tell that he's genuine. Some of these people I'm now I'm totally new to this, but, um, you can already tell with some of these people that they're disinterested, you know, like they'll just put up a picture, you know, no description whatsoever. Um, um, or that they're just putting things that you want to hear. 
I have noticed that I'm looking at people and there's quite a few runners on here. And I'm thinking, I'm a chubby chick and I really don't want to run. Um, I can move quickly like a brisk walk. But, you know, I don't want to run. So I don't know if runners want chubby chicks. I mean, I don't, I can imagine that that wouldn't make a difference to them, but I don't know. And so I have passed every one of them that was a runner, just in case. There's one, though, in my suggestions. He's pretty damn cute. Um, what if, if the runner wants. has a picture of him making cookies? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let me just tell you. So there's this one. So I, you can just, you can look in at people in the area and I'm guessing not a lot of people know about this dating site, which is part of the reason I picked it. I'd never heard of it before. I didn't want like my neighbor popping up on there or anything because that would be weird. Um, but, uh, so I expanded the search, which now brought up Cincinnati. Don't you know, there's all kinds of people in Cincinnati where I used to frequent a lot, um, on there. So, but this one guy, so uh, he went to school here in town. So I'm like, he's familiar with the area. He's bald. I don't know what color his hair is, but there's currently none on top and that's okay too. He has pictures with and without glasses. And he does things where he sculpts three-dimensional objects. It looks all kinds of fun. Like he makes stuff that I would go out of the way. I would drive hours to go play on. Oh my goodness. Yes. So remind me later, I'll pull him. Okay. <laughs> Um, because I might just, I might just spend a little something to click on that one. However, he's out of town. Like, I'm still thinking on that one. You might have to, I might just do it. <laughs> so if I think you could be fun, I might push that button. So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out too. Gotcha. I have not had a lot of dating experience and the relationships I've had have all been very different individuals, but I have learned what I do and do not like from each one of them. Right. I've also discovered, I don't know how to, I don't know how to bring this up. So this is something that I was thinking about. I'm sure people do this where you just have scenarios that you play out in your head. Probably never happen, but just in case they do, you know, you play them out in your head. So I have a spare bedroom and I was thinking, I can invite people to have a sleepover in a spare bedroom. Um, and then you can monitor the things that I've discovered that really get on my nerves, which is like sleeping till freaking noon for no gosh darn reason. That drives me crazy. Um, now you were out till 4 a.m. and you know, I kept you up half the night. That's one thing, but we go to bed at a normal time. I should not wake up four to seven hours before you. Um, that drives me crazy. And then I would also know if you sound like you have a chainsaw inside your face. So um, those are good things that that um, I think you need to know ahead of time. And I'm trying to figure out how to invite people over for a sleepover without like, hey, come over for a sleepover. So you just need to say, you need to pass this one test. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You just need to sleep in the extra bedroom tonight. Oh, that doesn't sound weird at all. <laughs> However, you just made me think about something. If we could just have really strong moonshine at home, and if they're just too, too inebriated, it is only it is not safe for you to leave. I insist that you sleep in the spare bedroom. That brings up <coughs> safety concerns for me, <laughs> for you. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> in fairness. <laughs> She lives in a duplex and her son is right next door and he could probably handle some shit. So <laughs> that no, my neighbors would probably come. Um, but they would question, Barbara, did you just meet this man? <laughs> Why did you let him stay over? This is not your character. How do you explain that to the police? Like, I, I just wanted to test to see if he snores. <laughs> Look, Rose, I think we established we are just winging it here. And sometimes I come up with ideas, and this is why I share them with you. And just so you know, you can always email and let us know, Barbara, you had a bad idea. <laughs> Rose does not have to be the only one to tell me when I have bad ideas. So we each have our individual emails, too. Barbara 
at Bright Side of Crazy and Rose at brightsideofcrazy.com. You can reach us individually or hello. We're, we're going to get it either way, so it doesn't really matter. We're looking for the future for when this is a booming metropolis that everybody wants to hear every week, Monday morning, they're poised on their little app to say, we want to hear what these crazy bitches are talking about today. <laughs> I'm not sure that we're a Monday morning podcast. Right? <laughs> Listen, if you're going to work and dreading that drive like I do every Monday morning, I need somebody to laugh with. And I think that's us. That's true. And we are here on a Monday morning-ish recording. <laughs> <sighs> so, are you going to sign up for another? I maybe think, more reputable? I think we should. I was actually looking at a couple more. Um, of course, being the person that I am, I'm going to think about it a little bit more before I actually do it. Overthink and, and overthink. Right. Yes. And then eventually you're going to say, just do it, Barbara. <laughs> and I'll say, okay, and I'll do it. Um, release the dating app. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I'm looking at a couple other ones. And, but then I look at, I've actually gone into a couple of them and it's like, you have to put in your email address and that just seems a little too real. So I've backed out. And then I'm like, if the picture on of the guy on your website isn't all that cute, I don't know. Maybe that's the best you could have in there. I'm not just looking for looks, of course. but Right. But they've got to do like the mid-range sort of. That's true. Something for everybody. So it's not just for the popular kids because we know how that turned out. <laughs> so on this one that I'm on, you can like kind of search for people. And what I keep forgetting to do is change the date the age range and so like if you change the filters you'll get different people they never give you more than just a handful anyway so i was playing with it yesterday and i like said i kept forgetting to select the age and all these kids were popping up um oh i forgot i did have one like me he was my son's age and he was he was a nice looking young man um but he was just that I'm like, oh, you can come over and play with my son. And it was just totally weird. So I had to, you know, pass on him. But anyhow, so these younger gentlemen are popping up. And then I just feel like a weird creeper. And then I have to turn it off and walk away and do something old and productive for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was just, I mean, they're all fully clothed and whatnot. It just makes me, it just weirds me out. And it, so it does me too. Like, I could not fathom dating anybody younger than me. I don't understand the whole cougar thing. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I Like, my son is just now got out on his own in his mid-20s. Like, do I've had to basically take care of, of his every need since he was born. Do I want that back in my house now that I have freedom? No. No. <laughs> no. You know, it could be because we've never had a pool boy. We've not been rich enough. <laughs> to have pool staff oh so maybe that's it we need to get if we had all right listeners if you have a pool house a cabana that we can borrow and experience the life maybe we'll have a better appreciation for watching a tanned young man in a speedo walk around and cat call him but mm, that just seems so weird to me it seems weird to me, too. I'm just saying I'm willing to put in the research. <laughs> <laughs> I don't also understand men who leave their wives for 20-year-olds. And I, I think that there are many 20-year-old young women who are probably smart and have it together, but there's a good population of them that are just seeking out older men to be taken care of. I get that. And I don't understand what the draw is for older men for that. I'm guessing just to show that they're still virile and can take care of a younger woman. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's something in the male brain about reproduction and that they can't help. It's, that's not the kind of crazy we're talking about <laughs> no, in this show. <laughs> no. 
No. Even but you don't have enough training, I think, to, have, I don't. to delve into the male brain. <laughs> I don't. I don't. That is a scary place for me. I don't want to go there. <laughs> You know, we could set you up with a specialty where you're helping people. Never mind. What? I was just going to say you're helping people come out of a divorce. And then on the back end, you can have a dating, <laughs> a matchmaking service where you can see if these gentlemen are healthy. Like if they're leaving their relationship because they were a piece of crap <clears throat> or just, you know, sometimes you grow apart from people and people change and that's. You know, if there's a mutual separation, that's okay. But you filter out who is the deadbeat trash and mm -hmm. who is a decent guy that just needs to find the right girl. And then you could have, like, a double whammy going on there. Wow. <laughs> and and yeah. since I had the idea, I get first dibs <laughs> at the good ones. Yes. <laughs> so for me, I really like to talk about things that I know about. And I am twice divorced. <laughs> so my experience with online dating is it's 99% no's. And I have this whole list of ridiculous rules that I spot judge people on. And I think part of it is because I really like living alone that much, but I don't want to die alone either. Like if, if I had a boyfriend in Canada, <laughs> maybe that would be great. And we saw each other only twice a year. Awesome. Awesome. Until I am feeble and need help <laughs> so that I don't go in a home. <laughs> Maybe four times a year. Like you go up twice, he comes down twice. Maybe. Because then it's like once a season. Yeah. That's enough for me. Yeah. That's enough. So until I find that right balance, it's really just ew, ew, ew. I can't do it. Well, and that's why I thought about expanding the search area to include or to a hundred miles because then they're not like, Hey, can I come over? Hey, can I come over? Hey, can I come over? And I'd be like, no, because you know, that's what kind of happened the last time. <laughs> I yeah. get that. Yeah. For me, like my children are not going to change my diapers when I'm elderly. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I think you're right. Yes. <laughs> So I'm going to be a bitter old woman in a home. I don't know that bitter. I think, I think I'm far from bitter, but, uh, I could see myself getting there because I put myself there <laughs> if I do not change my ways. And so about the dating thing, like, I don't know, like I could see the pitfalls in everybody and how it could not work because that's what I'm trained to do is find the problem. And I'm really good at finding the problem and dragging it out and finding the solution for the individual, but finding the solution for the couple, not my jam, <laughs> not my jam. I am a failure at that. As a matter of fact, oh, I no. need to work on that in myself first. And today is not the day, ma'am. <laughs> I really love living by myself. I don't live by myself. I have a dog and I have a cat. That's true. You do. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that is it. I live alone and most of the time sleep alone, except for when my grand princess spends the night. But I am rarely alone. I have people at my house almost every day. People that I dearly love. Um, but I am rarely alone and sometimes I long for being alone. <laughs> You can come over to my house and I'll be in my room and you can have the hole downstairs. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> I have to take the dog upstairs though because okay. he keeps wanting to sniff my ears. <laughs> can do. Can do. So is there anything else that you would like our listeners to know about who we are what we do and what we're about or anything. Hmm. Guess just to sum it up, we're just two middle-aged kind of crazy chicks <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> stuff out. Right. So please like this podcast. It boosts our ratings because right now we have zero 
until you make yours. Yay. And tell your friends about us and then tune in next Monday to see what crazy pants business we're talking about. And so I just want to recap the bright side in all of this. And so the bright side is, what about the cogs? I think the cogs is a bright side, a new awareness. What's the bright side in that? Just that I think things are, nothing's really new. We can look to the past to figure out how to do things in the future. And we're just spinning around and around. There's no reason that we can't figure it out. Right. Let's figure it out. Cookies are important. <laughs> Cookies are important. <laughs> they are also the shape of a cog. So it is very fitting with the topic. They go round and round. They make Barbie go. <laughs> Coffee does too. Coffee is equally as important to yes. her. Yes. Yes. Coffee, coffee, coffee and cookies. Cocky, coffee and cookies. I'm tongue tied. I'm so excited. My <laughs> mouth is drooling. My mouth is watering thinking about coffee and cookies, neither of which I have right now. <laughs> it helps me stay focused better not to have. Another bright side is that you're listening. Thank you. And a bright side is online dating is so fun. It is so interesting how you get to learn about one another and just what you want to know or to fine tune your skills and who is scamming <laughs> and who is not or to stalk them as Barbara is doing right now with the gentleman in Columbus. <laughs> it is called background gathering and I am gathering information. <clears throat> I don't know where he lives yet. That's a whole different website. <laughs> I have not gone there yet. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure he was a real human. So I hope that you have an awesome day full of joy. Find something good about the day and expand it and love it fully. Oh, another, another bright side is that book, Glendon Doyle, Untamed. To be untamed and uncage yourself from the prison that you have built around yourself. So get it, read it. I'm not done with it yet, but I already am in love with this woman. So I hope you will tune back in next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.